Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Oh, and he's gonna make a guest appearance today as he gets a little shoulder rub and don't we all wish we had someone to just sit here and do this to us all day. Anyway, I'm your host, Jake, and uh, four-legged friend here, pretty straightforward. I'm talking to you about real estate today. Um, and it's a topic that I'm actually pretty, pretty passionate about, which is sort of the general etiquette on giving and or asking for commission discounts, okay? This is a tough one, okay, because I get everyone's perspective, but I'm going to present you with my perspective and just ask, hey, maybe consider these things. First things first, I exist in an industry with all kinds of rules on what I can or cannot say, so I am uh, basically required to tell you there are no uh, rules, there is no standardized commission amount, it doesn't exist. The commissions can be anything and they can be paid by anyone. They can be paid by buyers, they can be paid by sellers. There's no fixed thing. But I'm just going to tell you, historically speaking, from my experiences, um, the in every case with me personally, the seller's side has been the one paying the commissions for both the seller's agent, aka the listing agent, and the buyer's agent, which is most of the time which side of the fence that I am on. And there is no normal amount, but I would tell you, um, historically, a pretty common amount that you would see would be 3% of the purchase price to both the seller's agent and the buyer's agent. Okay, so we're just going to work off of these general historical insights in my part that sellers might pay commissions about 3% on each side of the fence. Now, I get it. You're selling your house and you want a deal, as everyone wants, and you want to pay as little money in commissions as possible. Okay, there's a healthy balance. Anything less than 2.5%, I will tell you that me personally, okay, and you should really hear this because if you're selling a house, this is an important thing that I'm about to tell you. If you discount a buyer's commission, look, the listing agent can agree to whatever they want. If they want to say, I'll do it for 1%, cool, you're the listing agent. That doesn't affect me who's bringing the buyers in. If you choose to negotiate that with your sellers, cool, go for it, dude. I got no issue with that. But if I'm representing buyers, right, and I pull up a listing and it's less than like two and a half percent commission, we've got a problem now because I'm taking a significant pay cut if I get you that house. So it's not that I'm not going to show you that house. I will tell you there are 100 percent agents out there. If they're not getting like at least two and a half or ideally 3% on the commission, they will not show the houses, okay? Like I'm not trying to spin any conspiracies here. And again, I exist in an industry with all kinds of regulations, but I'm just telling you, this is a thing that happens. So you need to be careful about discounting these commissions too far because you can kind of sabotage your listing, okay? Next thing, a good agent is 100% worth their worth. Redundancy there, I get it. But a good agent is worth every penny of whatever commission amount you're paying them, hopefully a good, full, healthy commission. The problem is that sometimes you don't know until you know that someone sucks. So there's plenty of agents out there like any other profession, whether it's doctors or mailman that suck at their job. And the problem is sometimes you don't know until you know, and you're like, ah, it turns out you kind of sucked at your job. So I will just tell you that the good ones, they are 100% worth it because they're going to streamline your life. They're going to help you get, get you more money. They're going to ease your stress. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that you don't even know that they're doing where they're actually kicking ass for you. Okay, please keep that in mind. Next thing, people think that, I'm just going to say we, right? I'm just going to say we as a, as a collective group of buyers, agents out there, that we make full commission or even sellers agents out there make like, Let's just say it's a $300,000 house and it's a 3% commission. Cool, $9,000. So everyone thinks that, man, you make $9,000. What a killer payday. Okay, there's a lot of things that you're not factoring in here, which is first and foremost, how much time really went into this deal. You might go, man, it only took you a month to sell that house. Cool, yeah, also just factor in, like we do sales for a living. So how long have we been following up with you? Like 
th that whole process, a lot of times it's six months before we're actually getting paid on something. So that whole six months, we're actually putting in work with you, even if you don't really understand it in the form of running comps and getting your house prepped and just getting you in a right position to get everything organized in your house and everything. Like, look, it is a lengthy period. And the other thing is we don't necessarily make, in almost every case, not gonna make that full $9,000 in this example. We are gonna have things like brokerage fees. Many brokerages are gonna take, look, sometimes you'll see low percentage ones where they don't really offer their agents much. Maybe it's you know a fixed rate of 500 bucks per deal or up to 30%. I mean, I know plenty of agents that'll pay 30 and 40 and sometimes 50% of their commission once they factor in their brokerage taking a cut, maybe they're part of a team, right, where they have to pay like their team leader or something like that who's helping provide the leads to them. And now that agent's actually walking away with 50%. So we go from 9,000 down to 4,500 right there. So please understand that. Um, there could be marketing costs. Um, not your problem, of course, but hey, I, I know at least for me, like I like to get our clients a nice gift when we close and the gifts that I that I like to do with people, they're not cheap, right? So that is a, a cost of doing business for me, but it's something I enjoy. But again, point being, it is reducing how much money I actually make. Transaction coordinators, any other business expenses like any other business would have like gas and phone and all this kind of stuff. So I get it. You all think that we're rolling in dough and it's just not true. Most agents, Right when you go, man, you're making nine grand, and you you know you, you must be doing deals all the time. Not really. Most agents are not doing that. Most most of us are in the position of look, we're trying to get enough deals to like keep the lights on. Straight up, guys. Like I, I get it. There's big hitters that are out there that are driving around in their stupid Ferraris and stuff, and and you think that's just what it's like as a real estate agent. It's not. Okay, I get it all the time. Where on our other content, people see me and I'm I'm shooting some nice gun or something like that, and people are like, "Man, must be nice to be in real estate." I'm like, "You guys don't understand the full story of this, you know? Like, there's a lot that that you guys don't understand. Like, it's not worth getting into on on this video. Um, so please understand, everyone loves a deal. I get it, but you run the risk of really insulting people if you start trying to reduce commissions too far. The other thing to understand is that right now, especially from a buyer's agent perspective, which is mostly what I do, um, we are having to work way harder to get deals done because the market is so competitive and it's such a seller favorable market that we're in this weird situation where sellers think because everyone just needs them right now, and we kind of do, right? Because it's low inventory. It's like, yeah, we do need people selling their houses right now or just a shit ton of new construction, which is happening, but still we need a lot of resales as well. But it's like, hey, I get it. You think because it's such heavy to sellers right now that you can just screw all the agents out of money and it's like, it's all good. So that if you take something from 2% or from 3% down to 2%, to you, it might sound like 1%. To me, here's what it sounds like. One third of my income just got taken away. Right? What was the last time? Think about this. It's a seller's market. So we as buyers agents are having to work a lot harder. I mean, like for real guys, straight up, just me to you, honest human conversation. We are having to work a lot harder to get deals done, a lot harder, like significantly, right? Which means it's more time that we're investing into each client. And we are taking less on commissions right now because everyone's getting greedy. So what was the last time that your employer asked you to work a shit ton of overtime? I want you to work twice as hard and we're going to pay you, we're going to give you a one third pay decrease, right? Like, like start to think about it, right? Like I get it. Everyone wants a deal, but there is a side. And this is what I always encourage our sellers that we represent to do is like, like, don't forget to be a human being in this process. Like, yeah, money, I like money as much as the next guy, right? But don't forget to be a human being in this because while you might save a couple bucks, you're screwing someone in the process. And that karma, hey, whether you're a karma person or not, it does matter because most people selling their houses, you're going to have to go around and go buy a new house. And guess what? You screwed someone, now you're on the receiving end of being screwed because you got to go buy something right now. So things to keep in mind. I get it. 23 people will see this video. God, I hope that's not true, but it's probably not that far from accurate. Um, those 23 of you watching this, if you ever go to sell your house, please keep these things in mind. Like I'm giving you an honest human assessment of what it's like to be a buyer's agent right now, okay? Don't screw people. Give healthy commissions. Like that's my plea to you. Thanks, everyone. Um, pet your dogs.
if they lay down and they spread their legs like this, um, I don't know what that means. You know, I don't know what it means. There's probably a healthy trust level here. Um, but, you know, pet your dogs, treat them well. Give them a bone every once in a while to chew on. He, he chews a lot of bones, elk bones, actually. It's like knuckles from elk joints, so there's still some meat on them. It's pretty good. Not that bullshit you get at the at the pet store. Don't do that kind of stuff. Anyway, 1911syndicate.com will help you out with your real estate needs. We do these videos to hope over the course of time we will be able to help some of you guys out. So hit us up if you need anything. We help people out in a lot of different states, and um, there's that. Subscribe to the channel. I know you hear me say that all the time. It really does help us if you haven't done that, and it helps us even way more if you actually comment on stuff because we get better engagement and YouTube likes us more for that. So thank you. Appreciate the support. See you guys soon.